What's going on? My name's Jay, and today we're talking about. Today we're talking about. Today we're talking about. Are we done yet? Today we're talking about the Messiah Transitions Pack for DaVinci Resolve and how to use it to make your videos just a little bit more amazing. Let's take a look. If you go back on my channel late last year, maybe earlier than that, you'll find a video where I reviewed something called Handy Seamless Transitions for After Effects. And I love those transitions. I use them all the time, especially when I was vlogging. But unfortunately, when I made the switch over to DaVinci Resolve, I couldn't use them anymore. So ever since I did make this switch, I've been on the hunt for a transitions pack that was both easy to use and looked good. So when the guy who made the Messiah transitions for DaVinci Resolve reached out and asked me to review his product, I said, absolutely. Now he did give me these transitions for free, but this isn't a paid review. All of the opinions in this review are my own. They're 100% honest and all of that stuff. All this stuff I always say. Also, if you ever wanna check Check out the transitions for yourself. There is a link in the description. Make sure you check that out. There's also a coupon code for 10% off. It's just my name, Jay Lipman. Super simple. Make sure you use that as well. All right, let's jump into the review. Like I said, I was looking for something that was both easy to use and looks good. And the Messiah transitions hits the nail on the head with both of those. It's really easy to use. They look absolutely amazing and they're really good value for the money that you're spending and there's not just one pack to choose from either there's a huge variety you've got camera moves wipes glitches shadow wipes there's even a title pack and a, a text transitions there's a bunch of stuff that you can get messiah was gracious enough to send me all of the packs for me to review so i'm going to show you those in just a second but there's also not just a bunch of packs that you can get but in each pack there's a ton of transitions so if you get the whole pack which is on sale by the way you're gonna have a ton of transitions to work with another thing that i really liked about these transitions was the fact that they came with sound effects so when you drag the transition into your timeline there's a sound effect that goes with the transition super cool super useful i love it also when you purchase these packs you get a commercial license which means for those of you who do client work you can actually use these in your commercial projects. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's really nothing not to like about these transitions. And yes, that is 100% honest. These things, like I said, super easy to use. You get a huge variety. They look good and they're on sale right now, which is super awesome. But telling you about these transitions only goes so far. What I really need to do is show you. So let's jump into the computer. I'm gonna take you through the whole process of bringing these things into DaVinci Resolve, using them on your footage, customizing them, which is another super cool thing that they can do, and all of that. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing you need to do in order to get these things into DaVinci Resolve is to open up DaVinci Resolve. And when you do that, you'll find yourself in the project manager. And this is where we're gonna be doing basically all of the work to get these things into DaVinci. So the first thing you wanna do is right click and go to import project. And then we wanna navigate to the folder where our transitions are held. I've got a folder called messiah transitions and you'll see here we've got our title pack we've got our camera moves our glitch transitions our shadow wipes our text transitions and our wipes let's go ahead and start with the camera moves transitions pack so if we double click on that folder you'll see that there's a bunch of drp files these are davinci resolve projects and these are all basically the same thing except for the frame rate all of these are a different frame rate for the project so what we're going to do we're actually gonna extend this column. We're gonna find the project that's 23.976 frames per second. We're gonna go ahead and click on that and hit open. And now back in our project manager, you'll see that we have the Messiah camera move transitions project in our project manager. And I'm just gonna go ahead real quick and import the rest of these as well. All right, so we've got all of our new DaVinci Resolve projects, all of our transitions into the project manager. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna click, let's go ahead and click on camera moves to open that up. And you'll see that when our project opens up, we've got some media offline issues going on. What we need to do is relink the preview footage and the sound effects footage. And in order to do that, we first need to click on the preview folder. We're gonna go ahead and select all of this footage. We're gonna right click 
and we're going to hit relink selected clips. And from there, we're going to find the folder where all these pieces of footage are held. Select the folder and hit OK. And you'll see that all of our preview footage is back. Now we're going to go ahead and click on the sounds bin. Going to select all of those sound clips. We're going to right click. We're going to hit relink selected clips. And we're going to click on the sounds folder and hit OK. And now we have all of our footage linked. Next thing we're gonna do is come back into our project manager. So we're gonna go ahead and click on file, go down to project manager. We're gonna right click and we're gonna click on dynamic project switching. Then we're gonna go ahead and click new project. And this project will be called Messiah Transitions review and hit create and from here we're just going to set up our project like we would any other project we're going to go to file project settings set this up for 23.976 frames per second hit save let's go ahead and import some footage over in the media tab just go with our handy dandy stock footage of people at the fair like we always use Come back over to the edit page. We're just going to throw some of these clips into the timeline so we can work with them in a little bit. All right, we've got our clips set up. Next thing to do is to bring these transitions into this project. And this is why we set up dynamic project switching. We're going to go over here to the title of the project, this little drop down arrow. We're going to go ahead and click that and then click over to camera moves. Go ahead and select the Messiah camera move bin and we're going to copy that. Come back over into our main project, go over into our media bin and we're just going to go ahead and paste those transitions in. Now, for some reason, this creates a bin and it has all the bins, but it also brings over all of the preview footage and the sound effects as well. I'm not sure why they do that, but it is what it is. All right, let's go ahead and find a transition that we can use. Let's go ahead and open up our camera moves bin. And the really cool thing about this is you can actually preview these transitions in your source monitor. So we'll go ahead and grab this first one, drag it over and see what it looks like. And it looks like we've got kind of a whip pan looking thing, but it's more of a carousel. There's a lot of spins there. Let's take a look at the other one, drag it in. Play that. It's a little bit, a little bit shorter, kind of the same whip pan type thing. Let's go ahead and drag the next one in. We'll just go through all of these. We've got a nice little spin transition there. Drag the other one. Got another spin transition that's got a little bit more of a speed ramp on it. We got a whip pan vertical this is probably the same thing yep we've got a zoom transition another zoom transition a spin zoom And another spin zoom. All right, let's go ahead and use this shorter whip pan here. We're going to go ahead and drag that onto our timeline. Going to go ahead and click that compound clip, right click it, hit decompose in place. And we're going to get rid of the preview footage. And now if we play through that, you can see that we've got a nice little whip pan. And then obviously, if you decide you don't want that transition, you can go ahead and delete the adjustment clip and the sound bite, and you can drag in another effect and go through the same process again. Decompose in place. Go ahead and line up 
the cut in the preview footage with the cut in the main footage. And go ahead and delete those preview clips. And now, we've got a spin zoom. And like I said, these are customizable. And in order to customize these transitions, we just need to click on the adjustment clip. Make sure that your playhead is at the beginning of the adjustment clip and click on the fusion page. Go ahead and click on the camera zoom node. And for this particular transition, you can do things like invert the motion. You can change the zoom point. You can change the camera shake size, the camera shake speed, all sorts of stuff. And when you're all done doing your customizations, you can just hit control S or command S if you're on a Mac to save and head back over to the edit page. Now let's say I don't like how long that adjustment clip is. What I can do is I can go ahead and click, make a cut in my main footage over here and a cut in my main footage over here. Then I can select all three of those clips. I can create a new compound clip. I can go ahead and hit retime controls and I can change the speed. So let's say 200%. And now if we play that back, it's a much faster zoom. All right, so that one was super easy. Let's move on to the glitch transitions. Fun fact, glitch transitions are actually my favorite transitions to use, the ones that aren't in-camera transitions at least. All right, let's take a look at the white moves. Now, I have to be honest, the white moves were the only ones that I don't like, not because they're not good, they're really good transitions, they just don't really fit my editing style, but I know plenty of people who would get some good use out of these. They are pretty cool looking. For this last cut, let's take a look at shadow wipes. And these basically act as a frame blocking transition, which is actually really cool. The last thing that we're gonna take a look at are text transitions. Now, one thing I want you to notice as we play these through is that the background actually moves with the text, which is really cool for an intro, but if you wanted to do this maybe in the middle of your video, then it wouldn't work because your footage would be affected as well. One thing that I maybe would have liked to see is potentially having the effect isolated to just the text. And maybe there's a way to do that. I didn't really see anything. Either way, these text transitions are actually really, really cool. Now these transitions are awesome and I'm probably going to be using them all the time, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to be using in-camera transitions like the frame blocking transition. If you want to learn more about that, make sure you watch this video right here. And to see how I use reversing footage in order to make it a much smoother process, check out that video right there. And to learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out and I'll talk to you later. See ya.